welcome back. It's very nice to see you all. Thank you very much for sticking around. I know that on these open mic nights, we tend to go quite a bit later. Uh, thank you very much for sticking around. We have two very cool presentations remaining for us here tonight. The first is going to be on special relativity. The second is going to be on the Hanoi Zine Library and the effects that zines have had on youth culture in Hanoi. So thank you very much. Um, for the first of this, I'm going to open up the floor. Uh, I'm going to uh, turn the floor over to Mr. Alan Welsh, who's going to be breaking down special relativity for us uh, in, about, uh, in about 10 minutes. I'm so excited to see how he's able to take this one on. Uh, thank you so much, Alan. With all that, Alan, I give the mic over to you. You just touch that. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. You got it. Good evening. All right, so originally uh, I was going to get 12 minutes to, to do this, which is a bit difficult. Uh, with 10 minutes, I'll try my best, okay? Um, I know that many of you, well, I'm sure all of you have heard of relativity, and maybe some of you understand it, and maybe some of you don't. If all of you do, then there's no reason for me to be up here. But I'll just assume that some of you don't. So I will try to explain it qualitatively. Uh, so I won't use any mathematics, okay? I hope you're happy about that. All right, so let's begin. Okay, I'm going to go fast. As you know, relativity was propounded by this man, Albert Einstein. This photo was from 1912. He actually put forward the theory in 1905. And he put forward the theory in a paper titled On the Electrodynamics of Moving Bodies. It was in this paper that he advanced the theory of relativity. Relativity is <clears throat> tells us about the nature of space and time. It is not the same idea as um, what he's most famous for, which is that equation E equals MC squared. That's a different idea that was published in a different paper. Relativity is about the nature of space and time itself. You might be asking, well, why is it called? Why does it have this? The why does the paper have this title to it? And I hope by the time I'm done, you will have some understanding of that. Okay, so next slide. This is what relativity is. This is the principle of relativity. The laws of physics are the same for all. That is relativity. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> so that's what it really is. You might be surprised to find that out. Um, you might think this is common sense, and it is to many of us, and it was, it was common sense to, to scientists and to philosophers before Einstein. I'm not going to get into the history of the idea and why it was revolutionary. Um, it has to do with the fact that we knew that light behaves like a wave and the belief that waves need a medium to propagate through, so scientists had this idea that there was something called the ether. Well, the ether doesn't exist, and I'm not going to get into the whole history, okay? But <clears throat> this is what relativity is. And our understandings of space and time and why that has been revolutionized are simply a logical result of this principle coupled with the nature of light and what we understand light to be. Now, first, I want to note on... Um, I want to make a note on why it has the why the name of the theory is called special relativity. Uh, the name was given to it by follow by scientists who were, who were looking at the theory after Einstein. Einstein did not call it special relativity. He was actually um, he disapproved of this uh, of naming the theory this because he thought that it would be misconstrued by the public at large. And in fact, I think it has been. Sometimes you might hear somebody talk about how everything is relative and maybe even allude to the fact that Einstein proved that everything is relative. That's not what he was saying at all. What is relative is motion. Motion is relative. There is no such thing as absolute motion. Okay, so you might be thinking, well, I'm not moving. You might be thinking that, right? You're sitting down, and I'm up here pacing back and forth. But you have to remember, right? You're on a rock flying through space. You are moving. Everything is moving. And the fact of the matter is, if we imagine ourselves in space, okay, 
or we imagine these two people in space, okay? This man is in this ship, the lady is in her ship, and they're looking out the window, and they see each other, and they're passing by each other. Einstein thought, well, in such circumstances, it's quite clear that there's no possible measurement in principle that we can, <clears throat> we can perform to find out who is really moving and who is not. And because there's no, there's no measurement in principle that we can ever perform, then the, then, the, then the very concept of motion in and of itself is meaningless. It only makes sense to talk about motion relative to another object, to another frame of reference. Okay? So that's why it's called relativity. And it's not just that motion is relative. It's that time is also relative. There's no such thing as absolute time. How we measure time depends on our place in the universe and how big we are and how fast we're moving. And I'll try to explain that to you now. Um, so like I said earlier, um, the consequences of relativity are derived from the principle of relativity, which is that the laws of physics are the same for all, coupled with our understanding of light. Now light, um, the, the speed of light is a law of nature. Light moves at a constant speed. Okay, so there's light. And there. So that's known as the invariance of light. No matter where you are in the universe, no matter how fast you're moving, if you measure the speed of light, you will get 186,000 miles per second. Yeah. Yeah, in a vacuum. Um, but that's a detail. Anyways, so the, the idea is that... <clears throat> Light is invariant. It's a law. It's a law of nature. And going back to the principle of relativity, the laws of physics are the same for everybody. It doesn't matter how fast you're moving or where you are. When you measure the speed of light, you will measure it at 186,000 miles per second. So things are going to get a little bit weird now. And I'll try to, <laughs> I'll try to explain it to you. Um, okay, so if we imagine two archers here, all right? The woman is on the ground. She, she is not moving anywhere relative to the earth, okay? The man is in the train. <clears throat> he is moving relative to the earth. He's moving at 100 kilometers per hour. We can, we can assume that they're both applying equal force to equal bows and arrows, to identical bows and arrows. They each fire their arrow at 200 kilometers per hour. But because the man is, is in the train and he's moving at 100 kilometers an hour, per hour, if we were to measure the speed of his arrow, it would be 100 kilometers per hour plus 200 kilometers per hour, which would be 300 kilometers per hour, right? If we were to measure the speed of her arrow, it would be 200 kilometers per hour, right? There's nothing funny about this. I hope you guys all understand that. So if I have this ball and I throw it straight up and down, it has no <coughs> lateral motion, so it has no lateral speed. But if I'm walking at one mile per hour and I throw it up, straight up and down, from your, from your perspective, it has now moved laterally. And so it must have a speed. And this, the, the speed has been inherited by my rate of motion, which was one, let's assume it was one mile per hour, right? So if, if I'm not moving anywhere, the ball has no lateral motion, it has no lateral speed. But if I'm moving laterally and I throw the ball up, it's going to inherit my speed. So the arrow inherits the speed of the train, okay? So the arrow, from our perspective, will move at 300 kilometers per hour, and hers will move at 200 kilometers per hour. Why is that special? Why am I talking about this? Because in the case of light, it doesn't work that way. If we measure this person's light and this person's light, we're going to get the same result, the same measurement, 186,000 miles per second. So what's going on here? Uh, I'm going to try to skip this next slide. Nope. Okay. So <clears throat> we have to think about it this way. <clears throat> if there's a man in a spaceship, let's imagine there's a man in a spaceship and there's a box on the spaceship. Okay. What this box is going to do is it's going to emit a light which is going to go straight up 
reflect off a mirror and go straight back down, okay? So that light is, from the astronaut's perspective, that light is going to do the very same thing as this ball is doing when I'm not moving. So you have an earthbound observer. And she ha she's somehow able to watch this spaceship go by, right? She has a powerful enough telescope. From her perspective, she will see the very same light from the very same box go up and go down. But because the spaceship is moving relative to her, okay, it's going to move in a parabolic arch. So, again, from the astronaut's perspective, the light is going to go straight up and straight down because the astronaut is moving along with the, with the ship. From the, from, the, from the lady's perspective, the light is going to move in a parabolic arch because it is moving relative to her, right? So, again, <clears throat> if I were to move, if I'm, if I'm going to walk and the, and the ball goes up, from my perspective, it goes straight up and straight down. But from your perspective, it moves in a parabolic arch, okay? So, here we go. Okay, so, it's the very same light moving from the very same box back to the very same box. The events are exactly the same. But the light must necessarily take a longer path from her perspective than from his perspective, right? There's nothing funny about that. If the light moves up and down from his perspective, from her perspective, it's moving the same distance up and the same distance down, but it's also moving laterally. So necessarily, it's taking a longer trip. But in both cases, the light is moving at the same speed. So... From the, man, from the astronaut's perspective, moving in the spaceship, if he has a clock on his spaceship and she has a clock, then if she, if she were to check his clock, his clock is going to show a shorter amount of time elapsing for this event to take place than it does for her event to take place. When she asks him, how long did it take for that light to go up and down? And he tells her he's going to have a, sh a, sh a shorter amount of time than she would have measured because he is moving relative to her. He is moving closer to the speed of light than she is. The fact of the matter is the faster you go to the speed of light relative to somebody who's on earth, the shorter time will run for you than it does for the person on earth. I hope... You can see that. Okay? The distance traveled by the light is shorter here than it is for here. But in both cases, the light is traveling at the same speed. And this we are certain of because of the principle of relativity, which tells us that the laws of physics are the same for everybody. For that man, the laws of physics are a certain way. And for this woman, the laws of physics are the same. They cannot change. And the speed of light is a law of physics. They must be measuring the, light, the speed of light at the same uh, magnitude. And the light is taking a longer distance to travel here. Okay, so it must take a longer time for it to travel from her perspective than it does from his perspective. If you, if you were to have a clock on the spaceship and she has a clock, less time will have elapsed from his perspective than from her perspective. And this really happens. This is the way the universe is. Um, this was famously shown in the movie. Can I, how do I go back? Yeah. Okay. So uh, maybe some of you have seen the movie Interstellar. Um, I've only seen um, some clips. But... It famously depicted science accurately, okay? Many physicists were praising it because it, it, it was an accurate uh, representation of the theory. 
And this really happens, okay? So in the movie, the guy goes to another planet for some reason. I don't know why he went there. But when he comes back, his daughter is older than him, okay? And that's because of time dilation, which is what I've been trying to explain to you. That because he was moving closer to the speed of light than she was, when he came back, less time elapsed for him than it did for his daughter. So he was he did not age that much relative to his daughter. This really happens. This is how the universe is. And it isn't just that time dilates. It isn't just that one person's clock will run slower relative to another person's clock. It's that space itself will also shrink the closer do you move the, the faster you move to the speed of light. Length contracts. And the reason why both time dilates and length contracts is because space and time are really one thing. Um, this moves us to the theory of general relativity. So basically, you take these ideas that I'm trying to explain to you, and you couple it with gravity, and you end up with a theory of general relativity. And then Einstein's teacher, Minkowski, math mathematically convinced him that to make sense of all of this, we must understand space and time as one thing. And that is how we understand it now. And when you understand it that way, then you end up with the theory of, of space-time and how the, the, the fabric of space-time bends around objects, which you've probably seen before on some graphic animations. So, that's it. <laughs>